Welcome to lesson 22 in a C sharp from start to finish course. My name is Tim Corey and today we're going to get started on the tournament viewer form. I decided to break this form up into a couple of parts so we can make each part smaller. Today we're going to wire up all the fields, but we won't be saving any of the data to the database or the text files. We'll leave that for next lesson. Let's get started. Here is our tournament viewer form. And what this does is it displays our tournament name, the number of rounds we have, and when we select a round, it's going to display the matchups for that round. If we don't check, if we check this box, then we'll only see the games or the matchups that have not yet been played, which will mean this list will get smaller and smaller as we play games. When we select a matchup in this list, Team 1's name should populate over here, Team 2's name should populate down here, and then a score for each should be filled in starting at zero, but then we can change this by filling in the values and hitting score. Now, we'll do all the way through a score button, but we won't actually save a data anywhere. It'll just be on the form itself that we make the changes. So let's start by figuring out where we get the tournament object from. And I think that's pretty straightforward. We've done it before. We need to pass that in to our tournament viewer form. Essentially what we're saying is we don't know which tournament you want. This is not a tournament lookup form. That would be the dashboard. The dashboard, we find all the tournaments and say, which one do you want? The tournament viewer form just views a tournament. Therefore, let's pass in tournament model and do control dot and add the using statement. We'll call it tournament model. And then up here outside of our constructor, we will say private tournament model tournament equals, well, let's not do equals yet. We'll do that in the constructor. So tournament equals tournament model. And that's a lowercase t. So we pass in this tournament model object called tournament model. Notice the lowercase t versus the uppercase t allows us to differentiate between the class name and the parameter name. And we do have case sensitive C sharp. You should be familiar with that by now. So we pass in a tournament model as a parameter whenever we construct a new tournament viewer form. The first thing we do in the constructor is we take that model and we store it into a private variable at the form level, which means that anything on the form can have access then to this tournament object. The next thing you want to do is we want to actually create a private void set up. Let's call it load form data, load form data. And what this is going to do is take this tournament object and it's going to populate the information we need. For example, this right here is called tournament name. So we can say tournament name dot text equals tournament dot tournament name. So we're taking the value from the prop from the instance, we're grabbing the property tournament name and putting that into our text box, actually a label, on the form, putting in a text value. So it should say which one we're using. Now let's call this method. We've only done one thing so far. That's okay. We'll call this method right after we accept the tournament model. And now we can go and fix the tournament dashboard form. We will have a problem here. 
It actually won't have a problem yet because we haven't actually even called this yet. So load tournament. In here, we need to call the tournament viewer form. Tournament viewer form frm equals new tournament viewer form, but it's going to ask for a tournament model. We don't have that yet. How do we get that? Well, we're going to take whatever is selected in this box. So we're going to say tournament model tm equals, and we're going to get the the drop down, so we need to find the name of that. I always forget it. It's load existing tournament drop down. Load existing tournament drop down dot selected item. And we need to cast that to tournament model. So we're going to take whatever is selected here, make sure that we convert it over to a tournament model, and then we're going to pass that into the viewer form. And then finally, we're going to say frm.show. So that modification, this button is now wired up to call this form, and this form is wired up to change this label to have a tournament name. Let's hit start and see if this works. Let's pull over our form. So we have first tourney and second tourney. Let's grab the first one and say load tournament. And this pops up. Tournament, first tourney. Notice the matching names here. So we've got a winner. We actually have things wired up properly. Now let's continue on with wiring up this form. Now, so far, I picked the easy one because that's just giving the name. But the round drop down here says these are the rounds in the tournament. So, so far, I've used the example of a three team tournament with the, uh, the fourth team being that buy team. So, you have a three team tournament which creates two rounds. The first round has two matchups, the second round has one matchup. So this would be, should say, round one and round two in this dropdown. So we need to now figure out how to put round one and round two in here. Let's create a private method, private void load rounds. Let's call it uh, load round. Let's call it load round. That's fine. And then up here, we're going to create a list of string. We're going to call this rounds equals new list of string. So this will be what we wire up to our drop down. And it's just a list of string. And actually, let's make this a list of int. I'll make our lives a little easier. Now I'll explain why. So this list of rounds, whatever it is, is going to populate this dropdown. Now, if we have a list of int or a list of string, it's very easy to populate this list because it just grabs a value and does a two string and puts it in this box. If we put a int in here, then we can grab that back out as an int, and then we know this is the round that we need. If we have a string, we have to do a conversion on that, especially if we say in the dropdown, instead of just one or two, if we say round one, round two, in which case we have to take off first the round space and then grab just the number and then convert that. We could do that. It's a little more complicated, but it'd work. Another thing we could do is we could create a model. And the model would have a string representation for the round name, but it also have in there a list of matchup. And then we could 
grab that immediately and use it. We could do that and maybe come back to that at some point and say, yeah, I want to do that. But for now, let's just go the easy route, the simple route and say, we're going to have a drop down that has one, two, three, or in our case, for example, one, two for the two rounds. So we get a list of int. For rounds, we'll always have one round. So rounds dot add, we're going to add a number one. We're also going to say int cur round equals one. And then we're going to loop through for each. And we will say for each item in tournament dot rounds. And this will be a list of matchup. And we'll call this matchup. Matchups, sorry. And we'll create the appropriate closing angle bracket. So in here, we now have a list of our matchups. These are each of our rounds. And we're going to say if matchups dot first dot matchup round is greater than current round. This look familiar? We've done something similar before, but in this case, we're looping through just our list of matchups. So basically each round is all we're looping through. We're not looping through each value inside matchups. But we're taking the first value inside matchups and we're saying, what's the round that you have? Well, the first one is matchup round. And that's going to say one. And so we already have a one. We've added it already. But once we get to two, then we're going to say is rounds.add. And we'll put the new round in. And we could say uh, current round plus one. We could add the current round first or we can grab the actual value, which I kind of like grab the value, even though it's the same as the current round plus one. I just like having the actual value in case anything were to happen. It's weird, I know, but I like to have that. So actually what we can do, let's change this. Cur round equals the round since it's different and then we'll put cur round here all right that makes you feel a little better so we're going to start off with a one for the first round and we'll add that to the rounds list but then if the current set of matchups if the first values matchup round is greater than the current round the first time through being one so if it's a two, then take that value, put it into our current round. So now current round is two, add that value to the rounds list and loop through again. And it should be that we have a value entered for every single round we have. And now once we're done all of this, then we can make sure that we connect this drop down. And this drop down is called round drop down. So let's create another private method. And we will say that the round drop down that data source, we're going to start off at null. So we'll wipe it out if there's a value already there. And then we'll say round drop down dot data source equals rounds. And then we will say we don't even have to give it the display member because it's just going to display the actual value to string, which is great. 
So we'll call this wire up lists after we change the rounds. So after we've updated the rounds to have the correct values. And the other thing here is let's make sure that we initialize the rounds every time. Otherwise, what could happen is if for whatever reason we run this twice, if we don't initialize the list to a new list, we'll have duplicate rounds. And that's not right. So we'll start off at some, from fresh every time and add the rounds all over again. Again, let's start this and make sure that this part works. First tourney, load tournament, and we have nothing in our dropdown. No worries. We'll figure out why. And if you're astute, you've already noticed that I never called load rounds. Let's put our breakpoint there. We'll call load tournament again. After load form data, let's say load rounds. We'll hit continue. And now we pop up with this form, the first tourney. We have one already selected, and we also have two. There's our rounds. Now we should populate this list. Now that list should be populated based upon a change in the value here. So let's go over to our properties window. Let's first stop this. Let's go to our properties window. I'm actually going to pin this. And for this drop down, I'm going to go over here to my events, change to events. And if you notice, the selected index changed is the default event. That's what I want. So in the right hand side over here, I'm going to double click and it created the event for me. Now, every time that we change which item is selected in this dropdown, it will fire that event and we can update this matchup list box. Now, I'm actually going to call a private method. How'd you guess? I love private methods. Private void load matchup list. Actually, let's call it load matchups so it can be similar to load rounds. So load matchups. We'll call that from our dropdown. And let's not worry about passing anything in. We'll over here in our load matchups. The very first thing we're going to do is grab the value of our dropdown. So we're going to say int round equals or cast to int the round dropdown dot selected item. Because selected item is an object, but we know it's an integer, therefore we can cast it to an integer, just like we do in other areas we cast it to our model. So now we have the round we need. And now we can loop through our tournaments. Let's loop through our tournament rounds. I'm sorry. I'm just going to copy that code and paste in here. Because we're already doing that up here in our load rounds. We loop through our tournament rounds. But this time, instead of seeing is it different, we're going to say is the first matchup round equal to our round that we want? If it is, then we're going to do something with that value. And what are we going to do with that value? Well, up here at the very top, we're going to have a, another list, a list of matchup model. We'll call it matchups equals new list of matchup models. And I believe it actually will cause a conflict. Yes, it will. So let's call it something different. Let's call it the selected matchups. All right. 
So we're going to have the selected matchups. And this will be what we have for our matchup list box dot data source equals selected matchups. And we'll actually set it to null first. And then we'll also set our display member equal to something. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. But first, we need to come down here and actually set our selected matchups equals matchups. And where, where do you get that matchup from? Well, that's what we're looping through. We're looping through each round in our tournament. And we find a round that has the first entry has a matchup round equal to the round we want. We grab all the matchups. We grab all of them and put them into our selected matchups. And the last thing we would do is call our wire up lists. So the only thing we have left to do then is come back up here and change the display member for our list box. Well, let's look at the matchup model. By the way, if you haven't been following along or didn't catch what I said before, whenever you select an item, an object, and hit F12, that goes the definition. And that's a really quick way to get where you need to go. So here I want to say, what is the, the matchup? How do I display this matchup? And that's kind of hard because there's not really a good value. There's an ID that doesn't really help anything. There's a winner ID doesn't help. There's the winner. Well, we don't know if there is a winner yet. There's a matchup round. Don't really care. We know what that is already. So therefore we're left with entries, which is a list of matchup entry model. Not helpful. So let's actually create a new public string display name. No parens. We have a curly braces because this is a property. We have a git, but no set. And so what this git is going to do is it's going to figure out based upon the entries in the matchup entry model, what the name should be. And so the ID would be that the team name would be team name space VS period space, the other team name. So let's do this for each matchup entry model, M E in entries. And we'll create a a string output equals empty string. And then we're going to say for each entry here, if output dot length equals zero. So what I'm doing here is checking to see, is this the first person we're entering? If it is, I'll just put their name. So I'll say output equals me dot team competing dot team name. Else output plus equals and let's add the, the dollar sign string notation, the string interpolation, if you want to be precise. That's just a big word for putting stuff together in a string. So I'll put a dollar sign inside the quotes. I'll put a space, then VS period space, and then my curly brace, me dot team competing dot team name. And then the curly brace to close it. So why can I call the same, the same value? Well, we're looping through each entry in our list of entries. Our list of entries are up here. So if we have one entry, it's going to come down here and say, okay, the first entry output length is zero because we have it set to empty string to start with. 
Therefore, the output is going to be the team name. So think about the bye week. With bye week, we only have one team in a matchup. Therefore, the bye week, we just have a team name. Whereas, if we have two teams, after it does this and sets the output, it's going to loop through for the next team and say, nope, the output length is not equal to zero, therefore I call this. So I have team name over here, and that's going to be space versus space and the other team name. And now we can return all of this. And this is a read-only property now we can have access to. Copy this value, save your model, come back over here to the display member and paste in display name. Let's see this work. I will select our tournament. And notice already we have uncanny losers in the first entry and team first place versus Sue's team in the second entry. Round number two, we're going to have an issue. I can't select round number two. We have a bug that causes a problem. So let's see what that problem is before we go any further. I think I have an idea of what that is because when we select round number two, what it's going to say is, oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't have any team names. So what do I do? And it's going to throw an error. So that's my guess. Let's go over to our matchup model and actually put a breakpoint at the very beginning here and then try to change our round to round number two. Excellent, we get there. And it says there's one entry And it says the team competing, there's two of them. Nope, this is, the, this is still round one. We run again, entries two, this is still round one. But now we have entries two with a team competing of Sue's team and Team first place, that's still round one. Entries of one. Team competing two. It's the uncanny losers. So we've got some kind of issue here we gotta figure out. Because that shouldn't be what it's doing. So let's take a step back and go to where we're actually changing this in the event. And that's down here where we say load matchups. Now let's fire off this event and change this to two. And we're going to go right to the load matchups. And the very first thing we're going to do is find a selected item. And if we see here, drop down dot selected item equals two. So the round is going to be two. And yes, it in fact is. And now we're going to loop through all of our rounds. And in round two, we should find this object. But notice we have this display name error. I'm wondering if that's going to cause us a problem, even though we don't actually throw an error. But let's see. It's going to say for the first round items, do we have a match on the round number? So the first, I'm going to say matchup round, that's one. Does one equal two? Nope. Therefore, we're going to go to the next one and say, does the matchup for this, does its round, which is two, equal two? And it does. Therefore, we go to Selected matchups equals this list. And we're going to wire up the lists. And 
and immediately we fire this event again that says load matchups. So we have another issue. Let's actually stop this right now because we found two issues now. The next issue is that we are recalling this list because we are refreshing both the drop down and the matchup list box. So let's separate these out, wire up drop down, or wire up, let's wire up the rounds list. And we'll create another one called wire up the matchups list. And one will do just the rounds. And in the other, we will do just the matchups. And then instead of wire list, we'll call a specific list we need. When we update the, we load the rounds, we'll call one, and we load the matchups, we'll call the other. So the matchups is down here. Oops. There we go. And the rounds is right there. So now that should fix problem number one. Problem number two is our model where we say, give us the team name, but sometimes the team name, the team competing is null. So what we need to do is we need to wrap all of this in a surround with if me dot team competing is not equal to null. Otherwise, we get all the way to the end and our display name will be whatever we started with. But actually, let's change this to say else output equals matchup not yet determined. And that's because you're in a round where we don't know the winners of the previous round yet, so we can't determine what the matchup is. So if, if we have a problem like that, we'll just say matchup not yet determined. Now there may be two teams competing, which is gonna be a problem here. And so what we need to do is we need to break out of this for each loop. Otherwise, we'll have matchup not yet determined twice. And that's not what we want. So let's do a break. And that way, if we encounter a team where we have a null value, we're gonna say matchup not yet determined. That means even if it's the second team that we don't know yet, we'll still say matchup not yet determined. We may know one team, we don't know both teams. So we'll wait to determine who that's gonna be. So that should fix that other problem, but let's see if it actually does. Always test your assumptions. So we have round one, that's cool. Round two, matchup not yet determined. Excellent. Round one, uncanny losers, team first place versus Sue's team. Perfect. Now, Let's modify it so that whenever the value here changes, we update team one, team two to be actual team names, and the scores to have the actual score values if there are any, and then we can wire the score button after that. So let's start off by just saying, where we're selected here, update this information. So let's go back to our code behind. Let's actually close out these other things. I like having an uncluttered workspace up top. And I'll unpin this as well. I'll unpin this. Okay, so now what we want to do is whenever this value changes, which one selected, we want to populate this information. So let's go to our properties for the matchup list box. Selected index changed. Double click in the, what is a black space for me, or almost black. 
double click here and create the event. Now we can create another method. Now this method might be a little bit close to the other one for your taste, but I'm going to call it private void load matchup singular. Notice right up here we have load matchups plural. So if, if that's too close for you, feel free to rename it. But I like the symmetry of having load matchups, with, which is a list of matchups, versus load matchup, which is one matchup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say matchup model m equals matchup model. And this is the matchup Oops, matchup list box dot selected item. So that grabs a selected item and says, okay, that's a matchup, therefore give me that model. And by the way, we need to call this method from our event. I could put all the logic right inside the event, but if I did so, then I can't call the logic again without calling the events method. And that means I have to pass in an object and an event args. And I can do that by, by kind of faking it, but that's just ugly. So instead, I create a separate method and call that method. That way I can call it again from other places and not have to worry about calling an actual event signature. So now we're going to do a for loop for i equals zero i is less than m dot entries dot count. Now, why am I not doing a for each loop? Well, the difference is in a for loop, I have the int i, which I can use to determine is this the first one or the second one, which is important because if you notice, I have team one and I have team two. So if i equals zero, then I can do something. Now I, I could ignore the for loop, not put it in there, and just do a m.entries with a position zero and one for position one. The problem is I then have to do a check to make sure there's two entries. Remember that for our first matchup, we have a bye week. There's only one entry. Therefore, it throw an error when we try to reach entry number two in that matchup. So this way, the for loop, it will loop through the entries however many there are. Zero, one, two. And I only care about one, well, actually zero and one. Um, so therefore, if I do more than two, it's not going to do anything. And if I do less than two, it will just take care of the first one. So if i equals zero, let's grab these properties. This property name is team one name. And this is probably team one score. Yep. So team one name and team one score value. Team one name dot text equals m dot entries at array position zero dot team competing dot team name. Now you may have already realized we're going to have a problem here or a bug here if the team competing is null. So we'll surround this with an if statement. If m dot entries at zero, team competing is not equal to null. Otherwise, we have to do something. Team one name dot text equals not yet set. Now we also need to get a score. So we're going to say the team one score value dot text equals m dot entries position zero dot score. 
and you have to do a dot to string on that because score is a double and you cannot just put a double into a string you have to convert it to a string which this method to string does for us now if a team is not yet set what should the score be it should probably be just blank I would assume not even zero so let's just put it at blank so that's for position one we can just copy this and do it for position act two well a second position which is i equals one again zero base counting makes for a little confusing talking because this is the first one this is the second one the first one is a position zero the second one is at position one. So I apologize if it's a little confusing, um, but I'll try to keep it clear. All right, I'm gonna change all the values to one instead of zero. And now I have to change all of the team ones to say team two. And it looks like we have a problem with our team two score value. And let's find out why. What's this called? Team two score text. Well, we need to change that because we can't have one called text and one called value. So let's change this to say value. Consistency is key. All right. So back over here, those should now work. And now whenever we select a different matchup, we're going to come in here and populate the values for our matchup. Let's see if this works. Our first tourney will load the tournament. And we have the uncanny losers. Now here's an issue. The uncanny losers is playing against the bye week, but we don't actually have a value for team two. That's kind of a problem. So we'll have to fix that for when our loop only goes through one. But down here, team first place versus Sue's team, the scores are correct. If we change to round two, interestingly enough, we don't change this list yet, but these do say not yet set, which is correct. So we gotta figure out, we got a bug here somewhere with our update where it's not yet showing us the new values for our list. So let's close this out close this out. Let's address the easier of the two bugs, first of all. And that is, if we have a bye week, we don't get through to this second if statement. There's only one entry. Therefore, we never hit this. Therefore, we don't even put not yet set. We put nothing. So let's change that so that if we get through the first set, will also set the second set. So we'll say team two name equals, and we'll put in brackets BYE for buy, and the value for the score is zero. So that should solve the first problem now let's look at the second problem. The second problem is when the drop-down selected index changes, the round drop-down, we load the matchups. So what does load matchups do? Well, let's come down here. The first thing it does is it says, give me the round that you're in, find the matchups that if it matches, and then put those matchups in the selected matchups. Okay, so it just grabs the whatever round we're in, grabs all those matchups, and puts them in selected matchups. 
Then it says wire up the matchup list. So that sets the matchups display list. So it seems like that should work. I'm not sure why it's not working. But let's look at this wire up. Let's look at the rounds list. Rounds changes, round drop down, we load the matchups. After we load the matchups, we change the wire up matchups list box. So it should, it seems like it should work. So we gotta figure out why that's not working. And we'll get to that in a minute. Let's first load our tournament and see that Uncanny Losers now is versus the buy. And Sue's team versus team first place works. We can switch back and forth, that's not a problem. We switch to round two. And we get nothing. And why is that? So let's figure that out. Since this kind of breaks the form, let's actually close it out and reload it. Now it's working correctly because we have not yet changed the round. Let's find out what happens when we do change the round. So we'll put our breakpoint at load matchups, grab our form again and say change the round. It hits this, that's great. We find the round that it is. We find the matching matchup, which is second one. And now selected matchups should have a count of one. And it does. It has one item in our selected matchups. And selected matchups is this right here. So therefore, selected matchups has one entry. We go now to the wire up the matchup list. We take the list box. We set the data source to null. Now we take the selected matchups, which has one matchup. And it says the display name is matchup not yet determined. That's OK. And we say show that and set the display name as what you should show. And now we're going to run again the drop down selected index changed. That's interesting. We're running it, running it twice. Let's find out why. Oops, I'm sorry. We're not running it twice. We are just ending, we're finishing up that method. But yet, somehow, our list has not yet updated or refreshed. Now, this is a really head scratcher. And part of this has to do with the fact that the way that list boxes, the binding works, is a little clunky. I mean, setting it to null and setting it back is, is a clunky way of doing things. Now, I could do a binding list, but that introduces other problems. So let's start debugging by figuring out what happens when we select an item in our matchup. Now we have that matchup list box selected index change. So let's grab that and change our index. And it does change. So let's first step into this code and find out the selected item where it says matchup not yet determined. That's the one selected. So it knows about the new model. And we should be able to populate all this information. And if we hit continue, it says not yet set, not yet set. So it knows at least what the values are in this list. We can keep doing this. And just say selected item. It's got it. Hit continue. And so it knows every time I switch what the values are, but yet the display has not yet been updated. So we've got an issue in here where we're not actually updating our list box. We're not refreshing our list box. Now just to test it a little bit further, 
if we changed around one and we look, the selected item for round is round one. That's great. And we should be able to wire up our matchup list. So let's go through all of this. And it's going to say, okay, now we need to wire up our data source for matchups. And our selected items is two. That's correct. And the original two. And so now we set our data source to be null. Then we set our data source to be selected matchups. Set the display member. And now we're done with that. And now we have uncanny losers and first place team back. But yet I can't actually change my list box. The selected item doesn't actually refresh. So there's some wonkiness going on with our list box and our dropdown that we're going to need to diagnose and fix. And this is going to be a little bit of trial and error, which all debugging is. But the first thing I'm going to try is I'm actually going to change how we do our binding. It used to be that we have this idea of, let's actually stop our application. We used to have this idea of binding source and we'd call it something like rounds binding equals new binding source. And then we'd have another one for uh, our, our matchups. So we'd call it matchups binding equals new binding source. And then when we actually wired things up, we wouldn't wire directly to our list. Instead, what we do is we would say rounds binding dot data source equals rounds. And then we'd say the drop down its data source is the binding. And so there's that two way that two part connection there where we're connecting to the binding source in the middle. So and one side is our drop down on the other side is our list and in the middle between the two is our binding. So we do that. And let's do the same thing for matchups just so we have everything set. And so we'd say matchup binding. What's our matchup binding called? Matchups binding dot data source equals selected matchups. And then our binding source is the data source for our list box. We keep the display member as it is. So that's what we used to do. But then anytime we call these two, instead of doing a wire up rounds list, what we'd say is rounds binding dot reset bindings. And it's going to ask for a true or false for the metadata changed. And that means that the information around the data has changed, which we can pass in false. If we can spell it right. And now we set the bindings just for the rounds. And then down here, wire up matchup list. Instead of doing that, we would say matchups binding dot reset bindings false to reset the bindings for the matchup list. Now I'll put these in methods, but I want you to see what we do. I want to test it out and see if putting the binding source in the middle will help our issue. So we're going to run this again. And now we have nothing here. Excellent. So we've got some kind of issue we have to take care of first because our tournament comes out as blank, even though we have the first tourney in the tournament name. So we didn't do something quite right with our binding source. So we have our rounds binding and matchup binding. And once we load the rounds, 
right here, we have this load rounds. We should load the rounds up and we do need to, at that point, wire up our rounds list. Or short of that, what we can do is in our constructor, we can wire up the rounds list. And wire up the matchup list. So that's like the constructor. The first time you set it up, you configure the binding. But after that, instead of setting it to null, what you do is you do a reset binding. Let's run this again and say load tournament. And we still have nothing for our list. So we got something still kind of nagging at us. Let's find out what that is. And so after looking at this a little harder, I'm still not getting this to work the way I want. Now, I could keep fighting with binding source, but I do know that's the old way of doing things. I don't want to keep doing the old way of doing things. And there is a better way going forward, kind of. And that's the idea of binding list. Now, you can bind directly to a binding list, and things work great. Um, so whenever you refresh data, it gets updated automatically and you don't have to do any calls to refresh the data. The only problem with this is we can at least eliminate the idea of wiring up our data sources or at least mostly eliminate that. So we'll get back to this in a minute and we'll change this to a binding list. And we don't need to do resets. And so now we have only a few errors left, but one of the errors is this right here. Selected matchup, which is a binding list, equals matchups. Well, we can't convert a list to a binding list. Essentially, we need to convert every one of our lists to a binding list instead, whenever we're using it as a binding list. Fortunately, this is not too hard, we can say equals new binding list of matchup model and then pass in an I list, which list is an I list. Remember I in front of something usually means interface. In this case it does. List implements the interface I list. So therefore we can pass in this list to the new constructor. So new binding list, pass in a list, it will populate then the selected matchups. So that should work for that. And if we scroll up here, then we don't really need to do much with our bindings, except make sure that we have our rounds going into our data source. I'm sorry, our dropdown. So we can just say, there is our rounds, goes right into our combo box. And then also we have our, our drop our list right here, which goes right into our list box. We can get rid of this and we'll still set display member like that. So now we should have a binding list for everything and we shouldn't have any errors. A quick way to tell if you have errors is to open up Solution Explorer, look for the red squiggly underneath your file that you're in, and that should tell you pretty quickly. Or you can look on the right here in this bar, which gets kind of cluttered, but in here, if you see anything red, you can move to that. So again, this is an experiment. Let's see if this works, and if it does, we'll clean up our code. We load, and now we have nothing again. So that didn't work. So now we're at the point where we've made code change after code change, and we're kind of getting our code cluttered up. So let's first of all figure out if there's anything we can do to debug this first, and then we'll worry about cleaning up our code. So let's put our breakpoint right here. 
we'll say load tournament and it comes right to here I selected matchups has nothing in it and our rounds has nothing in it and we say the dro round drop down dot data source equals rounds and now it has a data source with a count of zero that's great the matchups the data source currently is null for the list box we're going to put into it the selected matchups which is zero in it and set the display member now we need to load form data well that's just the text name of the tournament name now we load the rounds now rounds which goes into a round drop down we're going to set to a new binding list of int we're going to add one to it so now rounds has one item in it and then for each other round besides round one we're going to add that round as well to our rounds so now we have one and two and now our rounds has two values one and two and it should be that we're all wired up if we mouse over the rounds drop down dot data source we can see that nope it still has zero so something's not right with the display there because it's not actually showing us what we want it's not actually binding the list and keeping that bound let's figure out why so this is where a little bit of guesswork comes in and a little bit of um, intuition maybe some googling look on stack overflow to find out some or find some solutions but I have an idea and that idea is this we do this rounds equals new binding list of int what if we didn't do that you see when we set a new binding list maybe it disconnects so instead let's see if we can do rounds dot clear and that should remove all the elements instead so instead of a new list we'll reset the elements and then we have to come down here and look and well let's just start with rounds that's the only place we change rounds let's see if that works for rounds and if it does we'll apply the same methodology for the matchups and let's take our breakpoints out and now we see that rounds we have two so that is the the issue we cannot set the value to be null or new list so we can't say new list otherwise we have a problem so we can't do that but we can clear out the list which also means that whenever we come down here we can't do this so how do we put the matchups in the binding list well it's be a little bit more complex and this is why I'm not a big fan of binding list but okay it's what it is it is what it is so selected matchups dot clear so that gets rid of all the items currently in there and then for each matchup and matchup model M we don't have M in this current context that's good M in matchups selected matchups dot add M so now we're adding that item in one by one after we've cleared it out so that should solve our problem we hope let's try it again load tournament and we still have a blank list but now we have one item and now we have both so how, what's the issue here 
Well, the issue is we're not actually calling these all the places we need to. So let's figure this out first. All right. So let's first of all clean up what we have. We've got a whole lot of code in here that's not needed or not named well or whatever. And so let's just clean up the stuff that we were messing around with and let's reset our flow here for our constructor. So our flow here is we need to wire up the rounds list and the matchup list. And that's just these three lines. So I'm just going to say wire up lists and go back to that. And I'm going to move this code into here. And I will call wire up matchup lists or wire up lists right there. We load the turnip model, we immediately wire up our lists. Now, that means we shouldn't have any other errors here. We're not calling that anywhere else. But now we go to load form data and that's just this form data here. Then we load the rounds. Well, the rounds loads up our rounds list with all the rounds that we have. And that works. So that's that's great. But what we don't do is we don't select the first round in any way. Now what's not happening here is we're not actually selecting the uh, loading the matchups. I think the issue here is that we're loading our rounds, but we're not firing that selected index change by loading those values. We can test this by putting the breakpoint right here and loading our application to see if anything happens when we hit this spot. And in fact, no, this, this was never fired. So in order for us to fire this, we actually have to manually change the value. Well, that's not ideal. So instead, let's do this. Let's move this logic. I'm going to copy it for now. I'm going to paste it into the load matchup. Now I'm going to take an int round in our load matchup. And here's why. Now I can call this at the very end. I can call load matchup, load matchups, sorry, plural and pass in a round of one. We always have the first round, and that's always the first one on the list. And that's right here. So therefore, as soon as you load all the rounds, make sure to load the matchups for round one. Before we go any further, let's make sure we test this. We hit load tournament, and now we have the selected list actually selected. If we change it to two, that works. If we change back to one, that works. Now note though, when I selected, when I changed to two, the matchup has not yet been determined, and yet the values over here are still uncanny loser and buy. But yet if I switch them manually, they seem to work. So we have a same issue here where we're not actually selecting the first value. So when the load matchup happens, that's where we populate the information. Let's do the exact same thing. Let's first of all grab the matchup model and we'll call it M and we're going to pass it in from the event like this and that events down here so we'll pass it in from the event like that that way when we load the matchups after we're done loading the matchups which is where we load them all but we don't actually select one we're going to call load matchup and we're going to say matchups dot, not selected matchups. We're going to say 
Yes, selected matchups. Dot first. So that's the first matchup in our list. Let's try this again. We have our first tourney. We hit load tournament. And now it's uncanny losers and buy. That's great. We switch to round two. And it's not yet set and not yet set. Back to round one. It switches back. So we, we do have that now updating like we expected. All right, so there's a little bit of debugging there, a couple of issues that, that cropped up, but that's really all we needed to do. We load this list, we load this list, we wire the two together, and we displayed the information based on which item was selected over in the matchup list box. Now, the unplayed only checkbox has not been dealt with yet, and the score button has not been dealt with yet. We're going to put those into the second video because when we score, we're going to mark an item as played, a mark a list, a matchup list. I'm sorry, a matchup. And so when you say score, the matchup will get marked as played and therefore we'll see if this checkbox works. We'll actually have data to work with. And so we'll do the score and the unplayed only checkbox in the next video and then we'll move on to actually saving the data once we've changed it. All right, so that's for the next video. Stick around for it.